Genealogies of Genesis, Wikipedia Audio Outline of Bible-Related Topics The genealogies of Genesis provide the framework around which the book of Genesis is structured. Beginning with Adam, genealogical material in Genesis 4, 5, 10, 11, 22, 25, 29 to 30, 35 to 36, and 46 move the narrative forward from the creation to the beginnings of Israel's existence as a people. Genesis 5 and 11 include the age at which each patriarch had the descendant named in the text and the number of years he lived thereafter. Since Genesis 5 and 11 provide the age of each patriarch at the birth of his named descendant, it presents a gapless chronology from Adam to Abraham, even if the named descendant is not always a first-generation son. Adam's lineage contains two branches, for Cain, given in chapter 4, and for Seth in chapter 5. Genesis chapter 10 the Table of Nations records the populating of the earth by Noah's descendants, and is not strictly a genealogy but an ethnography. Enumerated Genealogy Three versions of the Genesis genealogy exist, the Hebrew Masoretic Text, the Greek Septuagint, and the Hebrew Samaritan Pentateuch. Translations from the Masoretic Text are preferred by Western Christians including Roman Catholics and Protestants and by followers of Orthodox Judaism, whereas the Greek version is preferred by Eastern Christians, including Eastern Orthodox, Coptic, Ethiopic, Jacobite and Armenian. The Samaritan version of the Pentateuch is used mainly by the Samaritans. The Vulgate, published by Jerome in 405, is a Latin translation based on a Hebrew Tanakh compiled near the end of the 1st century, whereas the Septuagint was produced during the 3rd century BC based on an earlier version of the Tanakh. Both have, like the Masoretic text, been the basis for translations into numerous vernacular languages. Three children of Adam and Eve are named, Cain, Abel and Seth. A genealogy tracing the descendants of Cain is given in Genesis 4, while the line from Seth down to Noah appears in Genesis 5. Scholars have noted similarities between these descents, with most of the names in each being either identical or variants of those in the other, though their order differs, with the names of Enoch and Mahalalel slash Mehujael switching places in the two pedigrees. It is as if they were different versions of the same underlying tradition. This has led to speculation that copies of the same original genealogical descent had drifted away from each other, only to be brought back together and put to different purposes when the book of Genesis was compiled from these divergent Yahwist and priestly sources. For a continuation of this family tree through the line of Shem, see Abraham's family tree. Following the Genesis flood narrative, a large multi-branched genealogy presents the descendants of the sons of Noah. The 70 names given represent biblical geography, consisting of local ethnonyms and toponyms presented in the form of eponymous ancestors. This is a symbolic presentation of the peopling of the world and indicates a view of the unity of the human race. The peoples and places are not organized by geography, language family, or ethnic groups, and probably do not represent the geography of a particular point in history, instead deriving from an old nucleus of geographical knowledge to which additional names slash peoples were subsequently added. Nearly all modern translations of Genesis are derived from the Masoretic text. But there are also two other versions of Genesis, the Samaritan and the Septuagint. Although scholars are aware that these three versions of Genesis 5 have different numbers, people who have seen only the commonly available translations are often unaware that other versions exist.
The numbers in the Masoretic, Samaritan, and Lushanic Septuagint versions of Genesis are shown in this table. The following table lists the patriarchs that appear in the Vulgate and the Septuagint, but their names are spelled as they appear in the King James Version of the Bible. Their year of birth differs according to the Vulgate or the Septuagint. Also given is each patriarch's age at the birth of his named son and the age of the patriarch's death. Kainan, born after the flood, is mentioned in the Septuagint but not the Vulgate. Methuselah survived the flood according to the Septuagint, even though he was not on Noah's Ark. The genealogies of Genesis contain a difficulty with regards to the birth of Arphaxad. One method of calculating places the birth of Arphaxad 600 years after the birth of Noah, while another places Arphaxad's birth 602 years after Noah. The table below uses the 602-year method. The 600-year method would decrease the date for Arphaxad and all the following figures by two years. This chart counts year totals only, can be calculated by adding 2 to any given value in either the birth or death columns. The result will give a corresponding date in AM. The epoch for this calendar system is 3761 BCE. 1. According to most interpretations, including the New Testament epistle to the Hebrews, Enoch did not die but was taken away by God. Genesis states that Enoch walked with God, and he not, for God took him. Genealogies of Cain and Seth 2. On this chart Noah is listed as having lived 502 years when he begot Shem and this calculation is based on the birth year of Arphaxad. The extra-biblical book of Jasher also mentions that Noah was 502 years old when his wife Nama bare Shem. The current formal usage of the Anno Mundi calendar era is implemented based on the calculations of Maimonides in Mishnah Torah, it is the official method of calculating years on the Hebrew calendar currently in use. Based on a calculation using the Masoretic text recorded in the Seder Olam Rabbah of Rabbi Jose ben Halafta the first five days of creation in Genesis were in Anno Mundi 1, and the creation of Adam was on 1 Tishrei in Anno Mundi 2 which corresponds to 3760 BCE. The official Anno Mundi epoch is Anno Mundi 1. This first year begins almost a full year before creation and is commonly referred to as the year of emptiness or the ascension year in Jewish tradition and coincides with the years 3761-3760 BCE. Counting a number of years based on an annual fixed calendar date yields a different result from a rolling year count based on dates such as birthdays which have the possibility of being at any time of the year and change depending on the individual. Using this method has led some chronologists to add or subtract a 0.5 year margin to slash from the birth year of each patriarch to account for unknown birth dates. The first mention in Genesis of the use of a fixed method to reckon years is made in Genesis 1 referring to the lights in the firmament. A fixed calendar system is usually determined by a fixed annual epoch such as New Year's Day in alignment with astronomical objects in which the reckoning of the year occurs on its epoch. Years represented in Anno Mundi dates could be interpreted to be in alignment with Rosh Hashanah and are counted according to its annual occurrence. There are several different interpretations as to the exact birth year of Shem and his son Arphaxad. Based on Noah being at least 500 years old when B began to beget children and Noah's sons each having an age difference, it is not uncommon to encounter chronologies that list Shem as being 98 years old when the flood began. Shem begot Arphaxad two years after the flood when he was 100 years old. In the Masoretic, Vulgate, and the Samaritan Pentateuch the method of starting from the birth of Noah and adding exactly 500 years until Shem, 
and adding another 100 years until the birth of Arfaxad would be the same year as the death of Methuselah following the above chart. Since Methuselah was not mentioned in Genesis among those who were aboard the Ark, it is possible that his death came in the same year of the Flood. Based on the Masoretic text, Counting 1,656 years on the above chart will result in being the 600th year of Noah's life, the year of the death of Methuselah and year that the flood began. The two-year discrepancy is commonly resolved by rendering the birth year of Shem in the same year when Noah was 502 years old and Arphaxad as being born two years after the death of Methuselah and the flood. Table of Nations Genesis Numbers A comparison of the Genesis 5 numbers in the above table shows that the ages when the sons were born plus the remainders equal the totals given in each version, but each version uses different numbers to arrive at these totals. The three versions agree on some of the total ages at death, but many of the other numbers differ by exactly 100. The Septuagint numbers for the ages of the fathers at the birth of their sons, are in many instances 100 greater than the corresponding numbers in the other two versions. Usage of Anno Mundi Counting Years Birth Years of Shem and Arphaxad Differences in the Genesis 5 Numbers Priestly Source the Samaritan chronology has Jared and Methuselah dying in Noah's 600th year, the year of the flood. The Masoretic chronology also has Methuselah dying in Noah's 600th year, but the Masoretic version uses a different chronology than the Samaritan version. The Lushanic text of the Septuagint has Methuselah surviving the flood and therefore the 100-year differences were not an attempt by the Septuagint editors to have Jared, Methuselah, or Lamech die during or prior to the flood. Some scholars argue that the differences between the Masoretic and Septuagint chronologies in Genesis 5 can be explained as alterations designed to rationalize a primary Masoretic system of chronology to a later Septuagint system. According to another scholar, to assume that the Masoretic text is primary is a mere convention for the scholarly world and it should not be postulated in advance that M.T. reflects the original text of the biblical books better than the other texts. The Genesis 5 numbers were presumably intended to be read at face value, as years, and not months because attempts to rationalize the numbers by translating years as months results in some of the Genesis 5 people fathering children when they were five years old. The scholarly translation of the Hebrew Pentateuch into Greek at Alexandria, Egypt, in about 280 BC worked from a Hebrew text that was edited in the 5th and 4th centuries BC. This would be centuries older than the Proto-Masoretic text selected as the official text by the Masoretes. The priestly source illustrates history in Genesis by compiling the genealogy beginning with the generations of the heavens and the earth and continuing through Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac to the descendants of Jacob's son Esau. Jacob's descendants are listed in Genesis 46,8-27 beginning with the phrase these are the names. Notes